as promised in a previous video, we'll be replacing my garbage disposal today. Uh, I had a troubleshooting video where I took you through some basic steps. Turns out I need a new one. I will walk you through the installation of this new unit here. Uh, this is the Badger 15 SS. The Badger 15 SS. SS stands for super sexy, super sport, super stylish. The three quarter horsepower, Dura Drive, delivers 1,725 RPM to powerfully tackle harder foods like carrot peels. As it turns out, that SS actually stands for stainless steel. And uh, stainless steel is still cool, not super sport. Uh, the benefit is, is that the internal grinding components in here won't rust. And uh, my previous unit, they're rusted out pretty bad. And actually, I'm pretty sure at this point that uh, it seized up because it rusted over. So uh, definitely a huge upgrade to my previous system. Uh, three quarter horsepower, I mean, that is a lot. Some of you might think that maybe that's not enough. I would I would say you stick your hand in there and uh, tell me what you think uh, but actually uh, this is a very impressive unit compared to what I had so we're in for a treat we're looking at a fairly simple install so you'll need a hammer or a mallet this is only if you have a dishwasher uh, there's a plug we got to knock out if you don't have a dishwasher you can skip this thing uh, pliers are big giant set of pliers you may need um, if you've got plastic fittings you could probably just use your hands if you've got metal pipes down there uh, Pliers probably aren't necessarily that great. You don't want to strip out that nut. You could also use a giant crescent wrench or a pipe wrench. I don't think you really need that. The pliers should be just fine. Uh, you'll also need a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver. And then I'm going to use a, a socket and a ratchet because there's two bolts that I got to pull out of the side of the garbage disposal. Um, you could probably use pliers if you don't have a ratchet or a crescent wrench or just something else to grab onto them. They shouldn't be too tight. I almost forgot. You're going to need some plumber's putty. And um, this is important or your sink is going to leak. And when you buy it, make sure the top doesn't have a crack in it. Because then you got to take it back to Home Depot and they're going to be kind of rude to you. Like, why are you bringing it back? Did you break it? So anyways, plumber's putty. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to take out the old garbage disposal, the dead one. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, if you don't have a disposal in there now, if you've already yanked it out, um, you can skip this part. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through that. We'll start off with the basics, which is unplugging the power to the existing disposal. So now I'm gonna start taking off the pipes over here. These, I'm starting with the top. This is actually a drain here for the garbage disposal. And this in here is actually a drain for my uh, water purifying system. And that's why it's got this weird monstrosity. Normally this would just go right on here, uh, but that's why that's in there. And this is something that somebody added. So there's not a lot of strain on this rubber piece. So what I'm gonna do, and yours might be different, but I'm just going to loosen the screw here. Super simple, at least for me. Like I said, yours might be a little different. And then once you loosen it, we're just going to slide this off. And I'm going to cut this first. Whoa! And that's completely fine. Now when you take off this pipe, it will leak, so you want to have a bowl or something to catch the runoff of the water. All right, we'll pee now. Okay, so to keep it from dripping all over the cabinet, I'm gonna put some paper towels in it for right now, and I'm just gonna let it hang off to the side. Next, we're gonna remove these two nuts here. I'm gonna use a socket and a ratchet to do that. You can actually use a pl or pliers. They actually got a flathead in them, so if you wanna use a uh, flathead screwdriver, you can do that as well. You just need to keep in mind that inside of this pipe might be some debris and some disgusting stuff. So you want to be ready for that, especially if you got your light beneath this pipe, like I do. Okay, I got off the first bolt. And here's the other one. Then I can pull the pipe off from the garbage disposal like this. Like this. This fastener right here. Actually. There we go, just like that. Before I move on with taking off the garbage disposal, I wanna make sure you guys know that the garbage disposal I'm using here is different from the most common types of disposals you guys will probably see in your homes. So to help you out, here's a quick mock-up that'll show you how to remove the more common type of disposals. Taking them off is a little bit easier. You just have to turn the entire disposal to the left, like you're unthreading a screw. 
Hang on to the metal collar at the top of the disposal when you turn it, and then the whole disposal will come off. The sink flange should have these three screws. Go ahead and use a screwdriver and loosen the screws completely. There's a metal ring on the bottom of the flange that you have to pop off. Here's a better example. Use a screwdriver, you can pop the ring off like this. Once you get that bad boy off, the rest of the parts underneath the flange will come right off, just like this. Then you can pull the dirty old flange right out of the sink like this. Ta-da! Unfortunately, my disposal is more of a pain to remove, so to make it easier, I'm going to take two different screwdrivers. The disposal is going to go in the trash when it's done, so I'm going to take the bigger screwdriver and stick it inside the opening over here. The other screwdriver is going to go along the top, right here. There's an area that will hang on to it when I put it in, sideways. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screwdriver in it like this, grab the other screwdriver, and then I'm just going to squeeze them towards one another. And since I'm too busy to hang on to the disposal here, it's just going to fall. <laughs> so this old turd here is trash, and I'm going to throw it away. There you go. So it turns out that the flange on my sink is glued in place. It actually won't unscrew, so I'm going to have to take a hacksaw to cut it off. Fortunately, it's made out of plastic, so cutting it off is really easy. Man, that's really gross. And on the top of the sink, just pull the flange out like this. All right, so now we're gonna play with the plumber's putty. And uh, this is like Play-Doh. And the way it works is we're gonna basically make a snake. You remember when we were kids and we used to play with Play-Doh and we made snakes? Same concept. So we're gonna grab some out like this and we're gonna make a snake. Now the trick to plumber's putty is you don't want to use too little, like that would be too little, but you don't want to use too much because if you use too much, you won't get your seal correct. The good news is, is that in our situation, the unit that I'm installing, there's actually a some bolts that'll tighten it in place. So that won't necessarily be a problem here. But if you're working with plumber's putty in a different situation, um, you want to make sure that you don't use too much and that you don't use too little. And here we go. That's a pretty good snake there. So now we're ready to install it. All right, so the way it works is you're just going to basically lay it around the inside of the drain. Like this. It reminds me of uh, C4 from the movies when they were blowing stuff up. Pretty fun. There we go. We want to make sure there's an even amount of it. Now the good thing about plumber's putty is it doesn't actually dry. It actually stays wet. Um, maybe 10 to 15 years from now it'll actually be dried out and at which point it'll start leaking. Um, but you don't have to worry about waiting for this to cure before you use your sink. The moment that you get the seal closed up, you can actually start using your sink right then and there. That is a pretty good amount of plumber's putty. Now the thing is, is that the excess is going to squeeze out and when it does, we just clean it up. Ready for the next step. By the way, this is only two bucks, so don't worry about it. You're going to have extra. At this point, we're ready to install the flange, and it comes with this really nice stopper, which is a bonus for me. Look at that. I'm just like, you have to stuff a rag or put a cup in here like I used to. Uh, this thing, this is in sinkerator and stuff. This will be above the, the top of the sink. This flowery looking thing is on the bottom, and these screws are what help pull it and, and tighten it in place. So to use this, we need to go ahead and remove these screws temporarily. I'm just gonna loosen them up like this. The flange I cut off the sink was glued together. That's why I couldn't get it off. This one here has a metal ring here. This is a retainer ring. And this is what's gonna allow us to, to easily remove this without cutting this. You're actually just gonna get this ring lifted. You're just gonna use a flathead screwdriver. And I'm just gonna pull this ring off. This will allow me to remove this piece here, this piece here, and then the rubber gasket that goes on the bottom of the sink. So now we're ready to install the flange. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this in. Now there's, there's, there is wording on here. It says, if you can see it, in sinkerator. Food waste disposal. We want that to be straight up and down. If not, my wife is going to kill me. So we're going to set that in. And we're just going to kind of lightly press it in. I'm not going to tighten that yet. We're going to tighten it on the underside. Here's a helpful tip. Put down a towel, put the disposal on top of it. It'll hold the flange in place during the next step to keep it from moving around. To reassemble the parts on the bottom of the flange, we'll start with a cardboard gasket, followed by the triangular flowery looking thing with the open end facing downwards, and then the piece that has the three screws with the screws facing upwards 
and the screws will fit into the bottom of that flowery looking thing. So the next step when we put the ring back on the bottom of the flange is the hardest part of the entire install and will require to use some really bad words. I won't do it on camera and uh, ask your kids to leave the room. Here we go. You'll have to magically hold everything on with one hand and with the other hand get the ring around the bottom of the flange. It's easier if you lay down and try to do it from underneath the sink. Fortunately, it only took me five tries to finally get the ring to sit onto the flange correctly. First try. Make sure the words on the top of the sink, or the words on the flange, are properly aligned and then you can go ahead and fully tighten the three screws. You'll want to alternate a little on each screw to make sure that they're tightening evenly. Then you'll repeat the process until the screws are completely tightened. Once fully tightened, you'll see plumber's putty squeezing out from the bottom of the flange. Don't clean that up. Leave it there as it's going to help prevent any kind of leaks. Inside the sink, it's okay to use a paper towel to clean away some of the excess plumber's putty, but don't dig it out of the crevices. So at this point, we have to put a power cord on the disposal. Now, the power cord that came with my existing disposal is not compatible. It just doesn't have the right parts. Uh, this actually has a flange to hold the wire in place. It comes with the wire nuts and stuff, so let's go ahead and get that done. I'm going to turn this guy over. And there's a Phillips head screw that has to be removed from here. We just have to loosen it, actually. Loosen it up or remove it. Remove the plate, and our wiring is in here. So we have a positive, a negative, and then we have a ground right there. Okay, so the way this works is it just twists onto the disposal. There's threads on the bottom here. And we're just going to twist it on. But before I do that, I'm going to actually loosen these a lot more to give me some more slack. This makes it easier when we pass the wires through it. Okay, now I'm just gonna literally just gonna take it and twist it in place. As tight as we can go. Okay, open this flange up right here. We're gonna take the power cables and we're gonna pass them right through. And we're gonna fish them out the other side. Just like this. You tracking with me? Okay. These aren't clearly marked. So the way that works is that the ribbed wire, the one with the texture, is actually the uh, neutral, which is the white wire that's on the bottom of the disposal. So we're gonna take it, just gonna kind of lightly twist it over itself like this, just a tiny bit. And we're gonna take a wire nut and we're just gonna lock it together. Tighten it right on, okay? The smooth wire from the disposal plug connects to this yellow and black one here. Yours might be different, so just do some research um, using the instructions that were provided. But again, we're going to lightly tighten it, roll it over itself like this. Then we're going to use a wire nut. So we're going to loosen the screw here to put this, the ground in, it's this green screw. Don't let it fall inside the disposal, like this. I'm going to put it onto the ground and then put it back on and just tighten it back up. Okay, so now we're going to pull some of the slack out from the wire. There's actually a rubberized coating so that we can grip it in here. And then we're gonna tuck these wires inside the disposal housing, like this. We're gonna tighten these screws back up. And then we're gonna replace the cap.
Okay, since you have a garbage disposal, you're going to have to knock a cap out that's in here. What you're going to do is you're going to lay it down like this. Take a screwdriver, and you're just going to smack it with a mallet. Then you're going to reach on in and pull out the cap. Okay, so when we install it, we're going to make sure that the two outlets that are in here, that one there and that one there, are facing the pipes that are coming out of your sink. We're going to lift it in place. I'm going to line it up. Tighten this cap on here, like I said earlier. Make sure it's lined up and then just tighten them up. Keep going. I'm going to make food. I'm not going to wait. Yes, make food, please. There's a little bit of wiggle room here if you need to move it a little bit. All right, so we're going to replace this gasket that's here. This is the old gasket. It's actually in pretty good shape, but I don't want to take any chances. All I'm going to do is pull it off the end over here, like this. Just like that. Put the new one on. There we go. I'm going to replace the drain for the dishwasher. I'm going to put this piece back on here. This is going to lock right on here. All the way on. There we go. Okay, so I had to trim a couple of inches off the pipe in here, in this joint here, uh, because of the length or the width of this new unit. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce it. I'm going to put this here. We're not going to... I'm just going to kind of finger tighten this a little bit, just to hold it in place. Okay, so we're going to put the bolts back in on this side over here, like this. There's one. And then the other side. Those tightened, we can go ahead and retighten here. Close that seal. Close this seal, retighten this. There we go. Now tighten this one. And this one. Alright. Last thing left to do is plug it in. All right, so now that it's installed, the last step is to run some water and test it. And it works.